We have the wisdom that can disciple a city. We have the grace that humbles states. We are the hands that can heal the country. We are the songs that can lift up the nations. We are the sermons that can strengthen the world. We are a congregation taking ministry beyond the wall. for your saving grace, your mercy, and your power. I thank you, God, for accepting my, my confession and my pardon. I thank you, God, that you continue to sit high and look down low. God, how I love you more than anything. Now, God, we pray for preaching power. We pray, God, that you would dip us down into your treasures, God. Allow us move by your power to see and to come to know and be able to clearly hey, articulate thank you, thank you, your word with power and authority. Thank God, we you, give God. you glory today. Yes, God, we Lord. give you honor. Yes, Lord. And we celebrate you in Jesus' name. In the name. In the name. Amen. Oh, bless you, God. How we bless you. Standing all across this building. Standing across this building. Anything. Had it not been for you, Lord, I, 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 Lord, I love you, I love you, I love you, I love you more than anything. It was just brought to my attention uh, that Brother Harris, I think in Colorado, it's the father, Sister Kim, was found this morning unconscious and he's been taken to the hospital. And um, she's not exactly sure yet as to what's the condition, but God in the name of Jesus. We stretch forth right now, God, in the name of Jesus. We're trusting and believing, God, you are already on the scene. We're trusting and believing, God, that you're already making everything right. We're trusting and believing, God, that you have already dispatched angels. And you've already spoken clearly to the doctors to know exactly what needs to be done. So, God, we stand now as men and women of faith. We are standing now waiting on the good report. We decree and declare that it shall not be delayed. We thank you, God, right now in the name of Jesus. That by the stripes of your son, that healing has already come. God, we thank you. God, we give you glory. God, we give you praise. In Jesus' name. I believe today that the next voice and or text that you receive will be that of a good report. The gospel according to Matthew the seventh chapter. Matthew the seventh chapter. Beginning at verse 13. 
We will read two verses and we will climax and conclude at verse 14. Matthew the 7th chapter beginning at verse 13. Climaxing and concluding at verse 14. If you have it, say amen. amen. If you need a little bit more time, just say wait, Pastor. The gospel as recorded by Matthew 7 beginning at verse 13 says, Enter through the narrow gate. For wide is the gate, and broad is the road that leads to destruction. And many enter, and many enter through it. But small is the gate, and narrow the road that leads to life. And only a few find it. For your consideration, I'll read it one more time. Enter through the narrow gate. For wide is the gate, and broad is the road that leads to destruction. And many enter through it. But small is the gate and narrow the road that leads to life, and only a few find it. I want to talk this morning on the subject, how do I get there? How do I get there? For the grass withereth and the flower fades, but the word of our Lord shall stand forever. How do I get there? There's no doubt in my mind. That in this room right now, each and every one of us who's willing and honest enough to open our mouths and make the confession have had to pause for just a moment and ask somebody, how do I get there? Many of us have left our homes thinking that we knew exactly where we were going. But somewhere en route to that place, to that destination, we got ourselves turned slightly around slightly confused, temporarily disoriented, and we found ourselves pulling over at the corner gas station at the little local store and asking the person who's filling up their gas can and ask them, how do I get there? You know, the, the, that's okay. That's a good thing because you hadn't allowed your pride to cause you to drive around lost for too long, but you found yourself in a state where you were totally disoriented and lost, and you said, I just need to ask somebody how to get there. In June of 2008, the Pew Reform, the Pew Forum on Religion and Public Life released a U.S. Religious Landscape Survey and this survey was based on interviewing some 35,000 American adults. And in the process of interviewing, one of the issues that were covered during this interview was they asked the question, is there more than one path to salvation? They asked 35,000 American adults if there was more than one path to salvation. And that when they asked the, that question, is there more than one path? I want to give you the percentages of people within the various denominations that felt that there was more than one path right. to salvation. The Hindus had 89%. The Buddhists, some 86%. The mainline churches had 83% people feeling that there were multiple paths to salvation. The Jewish was 82%. The Catholic Church was 79%. And the Orthodox Jew was 72%. The historical black churches had some 59% people saying that there were multiple paths to salvation. Our evangelical churches, 57%. Muslims were 56%. The Mormon church was 39%. And our Jehovah's Witnesses had 18% felt that there were multiple paths to salvation. You know, I found this response interesting because most people that we sit by on a day-to-day -day basis, most people that we work with not even knowing feel that there are multiple ways to enter into the kingdom of God. We sit with people on a day-to-day -day basis. We eat with them at our tables. We ride with them in their cars and they don't even have the same foundational Christian religious beliefs that we have. You know, clearly most people believe that there are multiple paths, but I just want to ask you this question today. Is that true? No. Mm -hmm. Well, what did Jesus and his apostles say about the path to salvation and eternal life? As you haven't picked up yet, I'm going to be ministering this entire month of February, uh, month of what we in March. We're going to minister this entire month of March on salvation. 
And, and some people say, well, Pastor, maybe you should have talked about that before you talked about the tithe. And no, I did it in the order that God told me in the way I needed to. Because, see, a lot of folks don't want to hear about salvation, but now they want to hear about salvation because I told them the blessing that was connected to the tithe. But then at the very conclusion of that tithing series, I told them you can't get the blessing from the tithe if there is no salvation. So now their ears are tuned in to what I got to say. Because we have the desire for the blessing of the tithe. Yeah. Now, let's get saved. Amen. Amen. Salvation. Uh, what is salvation? Yeah. In general, it refers to deliverance or rescue from some undesirable state or condition. It is more, and, and, and most significantly within Christianity, it refers to the grace of God. In delivering his people from bondage to sin and condemnation and transferring them to the kingdom of his beloved son and giving them eternal life. I know I said a whole lot. But salvation for us is to be delivered from the bondage of sin and that of condemnation and transferred over into the kingdom of his beloved son and given the gift of eternal life. Boy, that's a mouthful. That's something to shout about right there. If we don't get nothing else, it's something to shout about the fact that we are being released from the bondages of sin. And then we are being transferred into the kingdom of God and, and there with his son where we will receive eternal life. My God, my God. For those of you who are pondering the question that I asked earlier, let me just help you with some, with some theological definition and say that there is only one path to salvation. I don't make any excuses. I don't have any qualms with it. I'm not going to even apologize for somebody who may be slightly offended. But according to the word of God, there is only one path to salvation. Jesus says in, in Matthew 7, 13, you can enter God's kingdom only through the narrow gate. He says the highway to hell is broad and the gate is wide for the many who choose that way. He says, but the gateway to life is very narrow and the road is difficult and only a few will ever find it. It's amazing how that passage, that, that picture is laid out before us as we see the road to life and, and, and the road um, uh, to the world and the, and the road to hell. It's, it's just a big old open freeway. Multiple lanes and traffic just flying up and down the road. Kind of like being on the Katy at 5 o'clock. Kind of like being on the Southwest or Northwest freeway at about 5 o'clock in the evening trying to get to where you're going, every lane is packed, every lane is full, and folk are still trying to get on the freeway. You are slowing down and allowing them to merge into your lane because everybody yeah. is trying to travel that way. But then the scriptures say, but the road to life, yeah. the road to the place where God will have us to travel is one that is very narrow, yeah. the gate is very narrow, and every now and then, yeah. You see a traveler. Every now and then you see somebody trying to merge up onto the road. It, it's not a road that is often traveled, but every now and then, tell your neighbor every now and then. Every now and then you see somebody trying to gain access to the road that will lead them to life. Jesus comes back and he declares in John 14 and 6, Jesus emphatically declares who he is and, and the power that he has. And he says, I told them I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one, he said, and not a person can come to the Father except they go through me. Jesus puts his, he puts his faith there. He makes it known who he is and his relationship to the Father. And Jesus says, I am the way. You can listen to what everybody else say if you want to, but Jesus said, but sooner or later, you're going to have to come back by me. Jesus said, I'm the only path that's going to allow you access to my daddy. You can't get to daddy without coming past me. Then we begin to look at the apostles. And we examine what the apostles had to say. Peter said that salvation is found only in the name of Jesus. Yeah, I know Peter historically has been known as one who speaks out 
Sometimes he speaks out of time and out of turn, but this time Peter is right on point. Because Peter says in Acts 4 and 12, there is salvation in no one else. He says God has given no other name under heaven by which we must be saved. I like how, I like, this is one of those passages, this is one of those subjects, you're either going to believe it or you're not. It's one that you know you're going to either go with or you're going to say, I ain't fooling with that thing. You, you can't be lukewarm on this. You got to either know for yourself and believe that salvation is by Christ or you're not going to believe it and receive it at all. Peter says there is no other name that God has given under this heaven by which you might be saved. See, there is no other person. There is no other power. There is no other authority that can claim the saving power of Jesus Christ. You know, you can go on a car lot and this manufacturer can say his car is just as good as the next car and that vehicle is just as fast as that vehicle and this one will last just as long as that one. But there is not another power, there is not another authority that can say that they themselves can save. Well, then we find those who say, well, I believe in the Father, but I don't believe in the Son. I'll accept God, but I'm not going to accept Jesus. Well, let me help you. If you believe in the word of God, 1 John 2 and 23, he speaks to those and he says, anyone who denies the Son doesn't have the Father. And he says, but anyone who acknowledges the Son has not only the Son, but has the Father also. See, we come to understand that the two, not, not excluding the Holy Spirit, but the two, the Father and the Son, come as a package deal. You, you, you can't get the one without getting the other. You, you can't pick and choose which, which one you want. The Bible says that if you, if, you, if, you, if you want the Father, you gotta take the Son. And if you call yourself calling on the Son, you got to believe and accept the father with him. You know, it's kind of like you're getting married. You can't just marry her and discount the, the, the in-laws. They, they come as a package deal. You, 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 you can't just say, well, I, I, I'll take this one, but I, I ain't going to take that one. No, you get all of it wrapped up in one. The father and the son are one. Paul said to those, who do not obey the gospel of Jesus Christ, that we would experience the vengeance when Jesus comes again. Now, then, let me just, you know, it's kind of hard for some folks to get excited about this teaching of salvation, but, but for the believer, we ought to, if there's anything we're going to get excited about, it ought to be salvation. If we're going to shout and run over anything, it ought to be over the fact that we saved, sanctified, and filled with the Holy Ghost. <laughs> if, if you're going to get it, wave your hand and get on your neighbor's nerve and tell them anything, tell them I'm saved by the blood of Jesus and I'm thankful for the blood of Jesus. Had it not been for the blood. It's just something about that, that blood. It's something about salvation that ought to stir us up and cause us to make a little noise in the house. Amen. In, in, in second... Uh, 2 Thessalonians 1, verse 7, he says, And God will provide rest for you who are being persecuted, and also for us when the Lord Jesus appears from heaven. He will come with his mighty angels in flaming fire, bringing judgment on those who don't know God. And on those who refuse to obey the good news of our Lord Jesus Christ. He said that, you know, God said that, that there is going to come a time when we will experience the vengeance of our Father when Jesus comes back again. And the scripture said that he's going to provide rest for those of us. And I'm going to say us all inclusive. He's going to provide rest for all of us who are being persecuted and who are going through. The Bible says that God will give us rest. And he's going to come with mighty angels to correct those who will not abide by his word. Salvation, God. Somebody ought to thank God for salvation. You ought to thank God for being saved. Now let me put a pin there and help somebody. To be saved does not mean you're perfect. 
To be saved does not mean that you don't have some issues and some challenges that you're still dealing with. Yeah. To be saved is the fact that you have, ex you have confessed with your mouth yeah. that you are believing in your heart that Jesus Christ is risen, that he is the son of God and that he is raised from the dead. And when the fact that he got up, you and I got up with him, the Bible says that we too are saved. You know what I come to understand in this word? When I read that passage of scripture that said God will provide rest for you. Yeah. Just where you can write your name in. Yeah. Who's being persecuted and for us. Yeah. You can write your name in. Yeah. When the Lord Jesus appears again from heaven and he will come with mighty angels and he's going to correct and reprove, rebuke and bring judgment on those who don't know him. See, let me help you with something. There is no exemption for anybody in this room. There is no exempt person in this room. No one will be exempt from the vengeance of God upon his return if you are out of the ark of safety. It doesn't matter if you're behind this sacred desk. It doesn't matter if you're standing at those doors in the back. Every last one of us will have to answer when Jesus comes back again. The Bible declares that when he comes back again, we will be judged by him and he alone. For those of you who are trying to figure out, well, how many paths are there to salvation? There is just one path. You know, what I've come to understand when I was thinking about this passage of scripture and thinking about this lesson is that there is a tremendous difference between reaching your destination in life and reaching salvation. Oh, there is. There's a, very, there's, a, there's a tremendous difference because if I were to ask you right now, if I were to poll this audience right now and ask everybody in here how to get to the Greyhound bus station downtown, there is no, got no doubt in my mind that I would get a myriad of different instructions and directions. Every last person in here have their own way that they will travel to get to the Greyhound bus station downtown. Some of us, after I followed your direction, you would give me direction, and if I followed them, I'd end up at the metro terminal because that's the place that you were familiar with, and that was the place that you thought was the Greyhound terminal. If I followed some of your other directions, I'd end up down there at the mega bus stop trying to think that that's where I was supposed to be. And if I follow somebody else, every now and then I might just end up at the Greyhound Terminal because you've gone there a time or two. And then some of you will simply say, Pastor, I just don't know. You're right. You're right. You're right. I don't know. Let me flip the script here. If I were to ask some folk up in this house right now, how do I get to the place what Jesus is. How do I get to heaven? How do I receive salvation? Some folk will say, by paying your tithes. Somebody will say, by singing in the choir. Some folk will say, by being on the prayer line every morning. Some folk will say, by, by standing and ushering at the door. And then every now and then, you might find somebody that might say, by confessing with your mouth and believing in your heart that Jesus died for your sins. Every now and then you find somebody who could tell you how to get there. Hey, you know, for some of us, after trying to get to the Greyhound bus station, after finding ourselves at the metro terminal, after finding ourselves at the mega bus terminal, after finding ourselves just sitting on the side of the road out of gas, some of us would finally stop somebody and ask them, I'm lost. How do I get there? You know, it's amazing to me that we would just as soon run out of gas and be lost instead of just asking somebody. You know, it, it, it don't make you no less of a man, no less of a woman to just say, you know, I'm lost. Can you help me find my way? That's all the word of God is. It's just a road map. It lets the word, it lets us, it reminds us that we are lost and God has given us his road map to help us along our way. The Bible says that he gives us instruction and direction through his written word. Is there 
are more than one path to salvation. No, there's not more than one path. But then you find that person that you go to and ask them for instruction and direction. And with all that they have, with all of the sincerity that they have shaped and formed and fashioned with, they tell you from the best of their knowledge how to get to your place of destination. But watch this. They are telling you based on where they think you are going. And they are telling you based on what they think they know. But if I'm going to ask somebody, if I'm going to lean and depend on somebody's instruction, if somebody's word is going to be the word that I'm going to need in order to get to the place that God wants me to be, I want to be able to ask somebody who know that they know that they know. I don't need nobody that's trying it for the first time. I don't want nobody who's never been there. I don't want nobody who's never experienced it. I want somebody who's called on him and they know him to be a healer. I want somebody who's called on him and they know him to be a deliverer. I want somebody who's called on him and they know him to be a way out of no way. I want somebody who knows him for themselves. But the problem is many of us are talking to folk and calling on folk who don't know him for themselves. We leaning and depending on folk who, who do more falling than we fall. But I want to tell you today that only through Jesus, only through the Savior, only through the Master can we ever achieve and receive salvation. I thank God today for salvation. I thank God today for that blood. They sang that blood song earlier this morning. It's something about singing those old blood songs. Regardless of how old you are, regardless of how contemporary you are, it's something about them old blood songs that reaches down on the inside and they begin to touch you and they begin to make you think back over your life and you just begin to say, Lord, I thank you for the blood. Lord, I thank you for your power. Lord, I thank you for your grace. Can you just touch somebody and tell them, I thank God for the blood. Well, watch this. Watch this. Y'all sit down. Let me close this out real fast. Watch this. If you feel like there is more than one path to salvation, somebody's gonna lie. If you believe that there's more than one path, Somebody lying. Did Jesus lie? When he said no man could come to the Father except by him? Did the apostles lie? When they taught that salvation come only through Jesus? Well, if, if, if there is more than one path, then somebody lying. I, I ain't never said that in this pulpit before. I may not ever say it again like that, so I apologize if I offended anybody, but if you believe in more than one thing, somebody lying. If Jesus lied, his suffering on the cross and his death on the cross was, was not necessary. If, if, if Jesus is lying, why did he die for our sins? If Jesus is lying, had there been another way, we would have traveled that way. If he was lying, well, there would not have been a need for the excruciating suffering that he experienced on Calvary. If his apostles are lying, then their suffering was in vain. Why did, Paul, why did the apostle Paul put up with the hardships that he put up with? You know, I like this passage of scripture. I'm going to read this to you because this blessed me. Paul laid out his CV, his curriculum vitae. He laid out his resume for the people. He, 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 gave, he gave his street cred, Brother Williams, and he laid out his street cred. And this is what he says in 2 Corinthians 11 and beginning at verse 23. I like how Paul said, Paul said, now look here, I'm going to give my street cred. And when I lay it out there, you won't be able to doubt who I am. Watch what he says. He says here, but whatever they dare to boast about, and then he says, and I'm talking like a fool again. Yeah. I dare to boast about it too. Yeah. Are, are they Hebrews? So am I. 
Are they Israelites? So am I. Are they descendants of Abraham? So am I. Are they servants of Christ? I know I sound like a madman, but I have served him far more. He said, now this way, start laying out his street cred, his street cred right now. He says, I have worked harder, yeah, 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 yeah. been put in prison more often. Yeah. I've been whipped times without number. Yeah. I've faced death again and again. Yeah. Five different times, those Jewish leaders gave me 39 lashes. Three times I was beaten with rods. Yeah. Once I was stoned. Three times I was shipwrecked. Once I spent a whole night and a day adrift at sea. I've traveled on many long journeys. I have faced danger from rivers and from robbers. I have faced dangers from my own people, the Jews as well as the Gentiles. I have faced danger in the city and in the deserts and in the sea. I have faced danger from men who claim to be believers but are not. I have worked hard and long. I've endured many sleepless nights. I've been hungry and thirsty and I've often gone without food. I've shivered in the cold without enough clothing to keep me warm. Paul said, y'all ain't got nothing on me. Paul said, don't try to come in here and tell me that you've been through something. Paul said, I've been through something. I've had some sleepless nights. Is there anybody in the house? I've had some restless nights. I've been without food and without water. I've had to fight going and coming. Paul said, I know what I know and I know who I know. Paul said, I've been through some things. And because of the things that I've gone through, I've come to know that there is only one way. To get to the Father. Paul says that the things that I'm going through is the reason that I'm here today. I didn't suffer for nothing. Is there anybody in this house who's made up their mind that you didn't suffer for nothing? Is there anybody in this house who realized, who recognizes in their mind that the pain and the hell that you've gone through is worth it as it relates to Jesus? That if you had to do it again, that you would do it again for the sake of Christ. Had you have to travel and walk down that path again, that you would walk down that path that God had called you to do so. Is there anybody in this house that made up their mind, even if you have to fight, you're willing to fight. Even if you have to crawl, you're willing to crawl. Even if you have to wrestle, you're willing to wrestle. Even if it's frigid and cold outside, you're willing to stand on your post. Even if you have to pray by yourself, you're going to open up your mouth. Is there anybody in this house huh, who stand beyond yourself? Because I know that my Redeemer lives. Huh, and because I know that there is only one way to the Father, I'm going to do any and everything that I need to do in order to get there. I want to hear him say, servant, well done. I want to hear him say, servant, you've been faithful over the little old bit of things. Come on up now a little bit higher. Let me make you rulers over more. I want to hear God say, well done, well done, well done, well done, well done. Well done. It don't matter what other folks say. I just want to hear what he has to say. It don't matter if they don't like me. I just want to make sure that he's in love with me. It doesn't make, it doesn't make me any difference if they don't want to keep me competent. I just want to make sure that he rocks me in the cradle of his arms late in the midnight hour when everybody else have turned off their lights when everybody else has took neatly deep with underneath their club they their pillows and they and they and they garments i want god to just hold me close to him i want god to just keep me when it's cold keep me when it's hot keep me when i'm lonely keep me when the enemy's on my tail keep me when they chasing me from every side keep me when my money is funny keep me when i don't have any joy keep me when he's trying to steal my peace keep me when folk are lying on me keep me when folk are stabbing me in my back keep me just to be kept by jesus just to be kept by Jesus is all that I want to have. Just to be kept by Jesus, just to be loved by Jesus is all that the believer ought to want to have. I thank God, I thank God that even though I may have meandered here and there, I thank God that I finally got myself back on the right road. I was no longer traveling where everybody else traveled. But now I'm on the road where every now and then, every now and then, I 
see another stranger every now and then. I see another traveler and we just wave at each other. We don't wave as in, in competition, but we wave at each other as if to say, I see ya down the road. I see ya a little bit later. Then they kind of get old school and say, I don't know when you gonna get there. I don't know how that time is gonna be, but one thing I do know, that by and by, when the morning comes, I'm gonna understand it better. By and by, will you just shake somebody and tell them by and by? Shake them like you really know. Shake them like you really mean it. Shake them like you want to get their attention. Come hither now. Come on and give God praise. Come on now. Give God glory. Come now. Honor God. Come now. Worship God. Come now. Celebrate God. Come now. Thank God. Come now. Praise God. Come now. something about being saved that makes you say yeah just something about the name of Jesus that make you say yeah it's just something about knowing him as a friend who will stick closer than a brother that make you say yeah mm, yeah sanctified. I thank God that I'm set free. I may not have dotted every I, may not have dotted every T, but I thank God that my name has been written in the Lamb's book of life. I thank God that he hadn't turned his back on me. I thank God that he hadn't forgotten about me. I thank God that he hadn't walked out on me. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Somebody ought to just wave your hands and tell the Lord thank you. Somebody ought to just raise your hand and tell the Lord thank you. Thank you for his goodness. Thank you for his mercy. Thank you for his power. Thank you for his grace. Thank you for his goodness. Thank you for his love. I thank God. Yes, I thank him. I thank him. I celebrate him. And I hope that I get on your nerve with my praise. I hope that I get on your nerve with my thank yous. But had you been there when God saved me? Had you been there when he rescued me? Had you been there when he delivered me? You would open up your mouth and say, thank you. 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 You don't have to understand my praise. You don't have to like my praise. But thank you. How we worship you. And how we celebrate you. There's somebody in this house right now who has never, for whatever reason, who has never accepted Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior.